On Sports Central, the coaches back to back for In Vogue. Top people in two stories. On 882 6PR. And we kick off with Roscoe Lyon down there at Freeman on there, so he might be a little bit frustrated. G'day, Ross. Fair to say. Good day, Brad, Carl. Mate, what did you say in the box when Jack Anthony did a pirouette and a twist and turned the football over and it went down the other end and Garlett finished the goal? I thought it was a nice finish to the nightmare just before <laughs> half time where Fifey five kicked it backwards, so he did it at both ends. Um, and they were really critical. Um, as much as you should be able to still win from there, though, when you're trying to build some momentum. I think, like with uh, Fifey's, the option was on, he just had to hit it. And, you know, on the back of 2 7 and dominated the quarter to go in, it was a bit deflated. And then come out, get an opportunity, and just sort of slaughter it. Yeah, it's almost a three-goal swing. So, and we lost our way in the third. It was really disappointing. They went about eight clearances in a row. We we lost at one stage around one forward for about ten minutes trying to get them reorganised. So, it was really disappointing. But then we dominated the last as well. So I felt we dominated the second and the last quarter without being able to kick straight. The third, we lost our way. And I thought the first we started well, but again couldn't convert. Then they come home strong. So that was it in a nutshell. I thought you, know. you should be undefeated. You know. Well, I think we could be 1-4, 5-1, 4-1. I think 3-2 is about right because we might have a... I mean, it'd be nice to have those wins, but look, we've had a really difficult draw. I think when I looked at the first five and we played four finalists, the grand finalists, prelim, you know, and then Sydney and the Saints, so it was incredibly difficult. And I think, you know, to potentially have been, you know, 5 0 4 one, or we are 3 2, it's not a bad result considering I've only been with the group really five games and six months. And we, we think we've put a foundation in place of competing and defence, and we really want to get to work on our ball use now. You've yeah. been doing that, but, but I look at the Sydney game and you look where Sydney are now, and the Blues yeah. on the weekend two weeks ago installed as Premiership favourites. You have got a belief, I'm sure, in your coaching group that uh, you've got the ability to match it with those two teams in particular, given where they are at the moment. Um, but it's just getting that scoring, Ross, and, and the pressure for big men in your team. Like, I looked at Anthony on the weekend, mate. It looked like his body language, to me, was the thing that was the worst, in that, you know, you've yeah. got to work hard. You've got to look desperate. Even if you're going yeah. horrible, you've just got to try. Yeah, and look, I'm loath to make excuses. And once you're in there in the race, you fit. But, I mean, Jack... Did have a virus all week, and, and so did Matthew. On the day of the game, Matthew basically wasn't going to be playing. We, we got that information at 12 o'clock. So, and when you put those two together, they sort of put pressure on each other. And look, there's no excuse, but it was a mitigating circumstance that we will take into account at selection. And um, but it's more the errors. I mean, the errors have got nothing with the ability to lift your legs. So um, you're right. We just feel we, you know, kept with Bradley and Jack. Had great summers and we're keen to reward that. And in post game, I said we're still working through the right mix. And you know, I saw in the summer just today. You know, like Kennedy was a pick three. Um, you know, Jack Darling's been one out of the box, and Matt Newey is a pick one. So our guys are working really hard. We're just trying to find the right level of, of talent and hard work to sort of complement. Matthew and Hayden and those types. Can I just go on on that point, though? And, and I don't know how much say you had in the recruiting when you came to the club, but for a couple of years now, mate, I've been asking your recruiters to pick some young, tall players that are available. Mm. And they yeah. haven't. You know, they've gone for midfielders. There's been yeah. a couple of mature blokes, like Silvani and Falks added to the list. Yeah. But generally, you, you don't have a, a, a depth of players in that range of 193 to 197, which is a place where you're getting hurt a bit or have been hurt. The club has been hurt over the last few seasons? Yeah, well, it's been difficult for me because I'm just, you know, I know they've done, you know, I, I was thinking about Carlton, I said to Chris, you know, the rebuild really started, we're, we're paying 100% of the salary cap and finished on the bottom four years ago. So a decision was made to shift and everyone knows the story over the last three, this is into the fourth year now, and, um, you know, to reconstruct the list. And, and then when I thought about Carlton, I was at Carlton when they finished on the bottom and the Wayne Britton then Dennis come in. So it's a that was two thousand and uh three. Mm. Um so it's been a ten year rebuild and they got seven pick ones or twos basically and they just we don't want it to be ten years, but we're four years into uh, a significant um strategic plan of, of building success. So 
Um, there's no doubt we, we need some tools. Um, you know, the, the ones we got, we're really happy with, but you're always trying to improve your, your talent um, on your list and, and, and amount. So I'm sure over the next few drafts, we're really looking for some tools. And, and look, there's always missed opportunities. I think we'd always be able to look back and, and I think Jack Darling, there's 16 clubs looking at it, but we're, we're building a midfield. We've got young defenders and, and South Clark, we think is going to be a pretty good player. I think he's a really good pick at 202 and in three years time. So, but you're right. We would like to add a couple more and, and there's different ways to do that trade, um, free agency and drafting. So, um, you know, Brad Lloyd and Chris Bond and, and his group, I'm sure they'll provide options at the end of the year for us to discuss and because we're in a hurry. None of us want to sit around for 10 years. Ross, in the interim, is it time now for Luke McFarlane to go forward more often? At least he straightens yeah. you up and it's time yeah. perhaps now that Silvani and or Grover come in and help uh, help down back to take the third talk. It's a really good point. It's, I did talk about it because you, you know Silvani can come in and, and Grover and Forks, but particularly Alex, and that releases Luke forward. Um and all I know, Luke's been a terrific back. When he goes forward, impact is he a permanent forward? And is that too much to ask of one of your veterans? They're the sort of things we are throwing around. But I, look, I suppose if we had a kick seven two in the second, and um, you know five three instead of three five in the last, we're probably not having the conversation. So um, you know, ifs, buts, maybes. But at the end of the day, there's a reason the club targeted Mitch Clark, and, and that fell through. Um, so you're, you're on the right track, and, and there's no, um, you know, magic wand where we can just, you know, wave the wand and there's one so, carry. So, you know, so, 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 <laughs> so, so at the end of the year, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Do you need another gun midfielder like a, yeah. a Goddard type who's such a good user of the ball through the midfield who can make your forwards run yeah. to the spaces you want them to, or, or do you look for the for the the the, 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 the tall centre half forward post that can uh, perhaps you know grab them? If, doesn't matter how yeah. they come in. Yeah, and look, I think you made a really good point about how it's going in. We'd like to go quicker. We, we held ourselves up a bit. And you're right, like, kick the ball to the space and, you know, I could run under it at times. Or maybe not me, but Carl might be able to. But, you know, you can make your forwards look better or make them look worse. So, look, I history shows you Collingwood and Geelong, um, you know, and Bri- Brisbane had everything. But, you know, Geelong, they, they were good forwards, but they weren't superstar forwards. And an elite midfield you know, can really help you. And I think West Coast were the same. In, I mean, they just had elite mid. So I think you can do it two ways. We'd love it all, but it's going to be about um, availability, to be frank. Uh, I'm not sure you can pick and choose too much, but we'd lo- I'd love a power forward because we think we've got some terrific young mids coming through with P- um, Pitt and Morabito, you know, and Crichton uh, to complement what we've got with Fife and Hill. And so, you know, but you're right, on the horizon, I think we've got to fill the void probably with a power forward. Just just with Morabito, because he's similar mm. size to Darling. He's 191 centimetres tall. I think a lot of people don't realise actually how tall he yeah, is. Yeah, he's, he's had him good size. Yeah. C- can, he, can he be that man? I mean, I know he's, yeah, a, I know yeah. he's underdone, but could I think he... you make a really good point, mate. I just think with the amount of footy he's missed, he's not going to be able to midfield run. So no. I see him as a part of our front six or even off half-back flank. When he can, just exploding off half back, because I think what we did learn from Carlton, and I thought Mark Duffield's article was really accurate. I thought skill and pace, as hard as we worked and the opportunities, um, you know, skill and pace, they got an abundance, Carlton. So I think Anthony is really critical in that role, and and, and so is Hayden. So he, these last two weeks haven't been his best. So we'd, we'd love to get a bit more of that speed and skill at its best. Does Aaron come back this week and does Jack Anthony get another chance or do you you've got to give yeah. reward someone else? Well, Aaron, Aaron ran on Friday and ran really well, but he pulled up a little bit um, tight post. So we'll, we'll give him the week, but I'm probably less confident now than I was on Friday seeing him run. But, I mean, we'll let him work through, but um, we would hate to stir it up now and lose him. So he's probably 50-50. I would have thought he was definite the way I saw him run on Friday. So Aaron would be 50-50 and... And Jack, you know, Jack was really good um, against St Kilda. Um, you know, obviously he didn't have his best day and, you know, he got frustrated in the end and, and cost the team a little bit. But, you know, his confidence, you know, to work hard and be a part of the team, he understands where he's at. And, you know, we'll be keen to give him another opportunity, but we really need to pick a team that will beat West, um, West Coast, um, Gold Coast. So, um, you know, and clearly, you know, their respect for us, Gold Coast, 
you know, Mackenzie's had a whack at Ballantyne twittering, and then the captain's had a whack at Crowley. Oh, um, so, uh, you know, I'm not sure how much respect they got for the Fremantle Football Club at the minute. So we're pretty keen to get up there and, and so, have a really good go on Saturday. So Ryan would be pretty cr- happy if uh, Gary plays? Well, I don't think we care who they run down the race, <laughs> but I don't think they've got too much respect for us as a club because I'm not sure they'll be tweeting about other players from other clubs, so we're pretty keen to get up there and compete. Crowley's been outstanding. Yeah, look, I watched the tape. There was no holding. And to be honest, I mean, you, you guys played in the, the rough and tumble of the 80s and 90s, one umpire, two umpires. Yeah, there's three umpires. I mean, the movie fielders never get better looked after. I mean, they don't get whacked, they don't get held, they get free kicks paid. So I just think it's some people being quite precious, to be honest. Mm. Mm. You just got to pick them off. That's what we used to do in the good old days, right? Days, just, <laughs> just come my way. <laughs> hey, just just on your just on your uh, waffle blokes. I mean, we, okay, yeah. we've been critical of John Anthony, and I probably probably uh, led. I've been drive, flying the plane yeah. with the one way ticket in it. But um, Kettler Bradley didn't have a great game on the weekend. No, he, I he went over. up there. Yeah, I went up to Joondal up. What yeah. a magnificent surrounds up there. So I watched half of that, and then I went to Leederville. Um, Oval and watch that one. Yeah, um, and Anthony Grover, he had a handful with Joshy Smith, and then Alex Silvani, yeah. well, he hardly saw it. So they don't really, when you have a look at impact on their own individual games, they didn't have a lot either. No, nah, sometimes it'd be difficult not knowing your teammates and different game plans and that. So really what we ask at Wildfall Effort is, is that you do compete fiercely and, and show a really good work rate. It's not always, we'd love form to go with it, but sometimes it is difficult. So those who give great effort, and have a real go for their teams and a high work rate, give themselves the best opportunity. And I thought Dylan Robinson was terrific um, on the weekend as well, you know. And Ross, just in closing, how much have you learnt out of the the two losses, Sydney and Carlton? Has that given you a lot better perspective on what sort of group you're working with? Yeah, look, I think they give you their heart. They, they have a real go. We're, we're young. We're looking for more... You know, leadership on field as a collective to get organised so we don't look like we did in the third quarter and our best is very good and we're just and for the majority of time we're giving great effort we just have some lapses I think in each of the losses you know 20 minute 15 minute bad period or bad quarter has, has really cost us and then you know, our ability to sort of convert when we have a bit of control is probably the two main things. But, look, to be 3-2 after playing four finalists and lots of operations in the off-season, we think we've got a good foundation, and but we've got plenty to improve upon. That's, that's probably the exciting thing. And I know everyone's a bit frustrated and no one more than the players and myself, but we just think at our best, giving great effort, we've got a game plan that will stand up and look, it's not perfect. We've got plenty to work on, and we want to hit the scoreboard more. But we think we've got a good foundation to to launch into the rest of the season. Ross, thanks for your time. See you on the Gold Coast. Thanks, Ben. Look forward to it. Cheers, Carl. Uh, Ross Lyon, there, the coach of the Fremantle Dockers. After the break, David Teague from the West Coast Eagles.